Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. In fact, it's not just another episode. It is episode eight zero zero. We made it to the end of year seven, guys. Right around the corner. No, wait. The end of year eight. Yes, right around the corner is beginning of year nine. I have to count every time fresh. Um, today, funny story. Uh, I actually sort of miscounted the games, and for some reason, I thought that the next video was 801. And so, in the Street Fighter game, I might have been talking as if that was the very last video of... Well, you know, it doesn't even matter. This is video 800, guys. Welcome back. Today, we're playing Boot Hill. It is uh, a game that needs no introduction, but I'll do it anyway. It is a uh, old-timey... Uh, arcade game. It's one of the earliest games in the book, I think. And I'm just going to idly chat as I desperately try to buy time so I can flip open the book. But I know it's on one of the first few pages here. 1977. Now, we've played Breakout, which is 1976. We've played Pong, which is 1972. And we've played the Oregon Trail, which actually is 1971. But I think the version that we played was actually like 19. 80 something because the the original Oregon Trail is just purely a text game but we played the uh the Apple II version that had uh the visuals this is one I played as a kid growing up um and you know it's wild to me that video games existed in the 70s because I know that they did and I know that was really the birth of them but in my mind it was like really the 80s where they like really exploded you know, like, there were some big ones in the 70s. I'm just looking at the book here now. Like, we've played almost every game from the 70s. Uh, Space Invaders, Adventure, Asteroids, Galaxian. Um, that's it. The, the book, you know what? The book has a bit of a paltry entry in terms of 70s. Anyway, we won't linger on that here today. Um, so today, Boot Hill... It is going to send us off, congratulate us at the end of year eight here, guys. What a ride it has been. It's a kind of a simple game, so it'll be interesting to play. But as you can see, if you've been watching the gameplay as I've been chatting here, this game is incredibly simple. It's two dudes in the desert shooting each other to death. And basically, one of the cool things about this game is that it has an overlay. So in the early days of gaming it wasn't always possible to actually render uh, things like, I don't know, color <laughs> or detailed graphics. And so one trick developers had up their sleeve is they could actually, instead of having a black screen, they could basically put a sticker on the screen with hills and, and uh, you know, roads and a graveyard. And that's exactly what you're looking at here. Uh, the Vectrex also played this, this, uh, this game where the Vectrex, uh, we played almost every Vectrex game at one point. I have a special on my channel from years ago where we did that. Um, but the Vectrex also basically just displayed white lines on a black background, but you could overlay on top one of these uh, like colored stickers, and it would colorize the screen and make it look like the graphics were far more sophisticated than they were. Anyway, let's go ahead and actually give this a shot. To start game, press one player button, insert one more coin for two players. Well. I'm just flying solo today, so use one play. Oh, I didn't even catch that. Okay, we're on the right here. Oh, God. Oh, he just shot me. We died. That You know, that's how, how, how fast life moves in the Wild West, guys. What's my shoot button? Okay, I got it now. Um, I like how they even actually tried to do perspective. So as you move further up the hill, your guy actually shrinks in size. But I think... This makes him harder to hit. Oh, come on. Okay, he did hit me, but my bullet flew right past his head. Bam! Eat that, dog. Now, I know you can use the second player's controller to, like, aim your gun. But truthfully, um, I don't have it set up to do that. And I'm playing this through RetroArch. Um, and it's just, you know, <laughs> surprise, surprise, I didn't get an original Boot Hill game and, uh, and, and, you know, modify it so that it could be directly recorded through OBS Studios. I didn't go to that length, guys. Call me, call it a half measure, if you will. But, uh, you know, I've been on this journey the past 
eight years to play through this thousand one book. Oh, the the caravan took off. I guess it was tired of getting shot at. Um, but I have been on this journey to play all these games. I'm doing it, but I mean, I draw the line at uh, spending hundreds, if not thousands, of dollars purchasing old arcade equipment just for a single video. Uh, I hope you understand. I think you probably do, but um, I had something else to say about. Uh, oh, my guy just went away. Game over. It's a straight up game over. I had something else to say about Retro Arc. Maybe it will return to me. Um, but yeah, Boot Hill. Um, frankly, I'm actually impressed that they. Um, computer controls other cowboy. Frankly, I'm I'm rather impressed that they actually um, have AI in this. Uh, you would imagine it's um would have been simpler to just make this a totally two player affair. I guess though it's not that complicated of an AI. You could just program literally random movements. Um, I keep getting shot. Story of my life. Oh, what the heck was I gonna say about? old game oh i know what i was gonna say okay i'm gonna link in the description below um recently i was on the classic gaming podcast um i'll, I'll link to that too actually um <laughs> sorry sorry guys if you are listening to this that wasn't what i was thinking of but i will link to you um i don't use twitter anymore because of obvious reasons so uh, i won't have any tweet to put out but I'll, I'll put a link to the classic gaming podcast i was on recently um if you want to see it's, it'll be in the description down below um, but, um, periodically, I just Google, uh, or I just search on YouTube, thousand one video games you must play before you die. I'm just, and, and I, I'm just kind of curious who else might happen to make a video about this book. Um, if you are curious, I have a whole video on my, uh, uh on my Patreon for, uh, Patreon subscribers that actually details, um, there were, I'm not the first person to ever try this thousand one games just play before you die. There's actually a, a handful of people who've tr picked it up over the years. Um, some of them got further than others. I don't think anybody made it particularly far. Uh, and I don't know how many of their videos are still around on YouTube, but I don't know, call it creepy. Maybe it's like sort of like the equivalent of Facebook stalking people. But I literally have been documenting other people that I've noticed doing this. And I made a Patreon video showing off some of their videos and showing how far they got and sort of talking about like, you know, what their strategy seemed to be. Like some people decide to go through the book chronologically. Other people from the start, like me, were going through non-chronologically. Uh, and if you're wondering, I intentionally am not going through chronologically because I didn't want to burn out all the 70s, 80s and 90s games in my first couple of years. So that by the time we got to video 800, we could still play a game from the 70s. You know, you never know what you're going to get on this channel. Game from the 70s, game from the 80s. If there were video games in the 50s, we'd do a 50s. I don't think there were video games that uh, that old. Uh, but anyway, long story short, somebody else recently made a video about the 1001 book. They're not playing through it, but actually this is a really cool video. And again, I'm going to link in the description down below. I don't know the name of it off the top of my head. I just... I looked it up the other day and I, I sort of made a mental note. I, I, I need to link to this guy. Um, but uh, but this fellow made a video and I mentioned it on the Classic Gaming Podcast. That's why I mentioned them and what doesn't make me think of it. Um, but he went through and he, he looked at what games from the 1001 book can you actually play? Because the book says here are 1001 games you just play before you die. Um, but as we have encountered ourselves, there are games, for instance, like Boot Hill here. Boot Hill is an example of a game you can emulate. With a little bit of effort, you can put the overlay on. By default, it doesn't emulate with this overlay. I had to take an extra step in RetroArch, but it's not that hard. You can do it. Um, so this is an example of one you still can play. There are games that we have encountered. Um, I think we encountered Planet Side recently. It's an MMO in the book. You technically can play it, but it is a ghost town. There's literally nothing to do there. I don't know, maybe if I was playing it wrong, but it is gone, you know. And then there's another example, City of Heroes. That's an MMO that technically was totally discontinued. But luckily for us, some fans picked it back up. But if they hadn't, it would have been gone. Um, there are a handful of other examples of games from the book that are literally difficult, if not impossible, to play. And so this guy... Uh, again, blank on his name, but I'll put a link in the description to his video. He made a video of 
can you play 1001 games? And he broke it up into which games are available on modern systems, which games do you have to emulate, which games do you have to pirate, and which games can you simply not play. Um, and it's a really cool video. Definitely recommend it. Check it out. So, you know, if I've piqued your interest, follow, go to his channel, say hi from me, drop him a comment, uh, tell him he's doing, <laughs> he's doing the Lord's work. I don't know. Um, I, I kind of wanted to comment on his video, but I also kind of felt too creepy to do it. So, um, but, uh, but no, he seems to make good stuff. Uh, but anyway, it's, it's, uh, I think a cool video, something that, We've talked about it a lot on the channel, but I haven't sat down and made a video about which ones can you play. I've sort of internally been tracking it, you know, in uh, in my internal meetings and internal reports that are passing back and forth at J Corp over here, you know, my uh, the the LLC that I created in order to fund the YouTube expedition of this thousand and one quest. Has one employee. The meetings are very awkward. Me, uh, but anyway. Um, Okay, back to Boot Hill. I don't know. We're we're off on this huge tangent. I mean, there isn't too much we can say about Boot Hill. Um, I kind of thought it would make an interesting uh, 800th video in that a it's iconic uh, because you know of it, its status as, as such an early game. And actually, you know what? Okay, hold on. I am playing right now, so let me actually try and kill this guy. Damn, he's good. Oh, I sometimes he gets me. Right as I get him, it's sort of like, oh, there's an example of what well, we're actually. Um, I like how once you die in the desert, it's straight to the grave, buddy. From desert to gr to grave, like get him in the ground as fast as possible, so the vultures don't get at him. I wonder if there are speed running tournaments for this game. I mean, if there is a record, it's probably held by Todd Rogers, right? Um. These are deep cuts, guys. Deep cuts. You, you got to be embedded in the retro gaming community to get my references. If you don't know who, who Todd Rogers was, he was friends with Billy Mitchell. Turned out uh, to be a blatant cheater, um, but he claimed to have many, 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 many. Look him up if you want. Um, gosh, there's another guy who I watch who does good videos about like speedrunners and cheating in video games. God, I'm blank on his name too. I just I can't remember names, guys. But if you Google Todd Rogers cheat, you'll probably find the video that uh, I've seen that has gone into tremendous forensic detail on this case. Um, but we only have one second left. It's interesting that this game is just timed. Like it's not like you run out of lives or whatever. It's like you get like 60 seconds, 90 seconds to play. Interesting. Anyway, okay, this is, this game is incredibly simple. We're going to run out of stuff to talk about. Let us look up what the book says about Boot Hill, about why it's so iconic. You could argue that Boot Hill is really just Pong redesigned by, John, by a John Wayne fan. Two players take on the role. Cowboys on opposite sides of Western backdrop lined with cacti and the odd wagon. This is an Atari's landmark bat and ball. You can uh, ricochet shots off the top and bottom. We haven't done much of that because I haven't angled my gun. But you can see how you can sort of angle your gun, and there's a way to ricochet. Um, but anyway, um, you only have six shots. Um, you're torn between coming out and blasting, taking cover. There's a CPU player designed by David Nutting, a jazzed-up semi-sequel to his earlier gunfight, 1975. Oh, so the, so this isn't even the first gun battling dueling game in video games. There's a 1975 game. One problem of resurrecting retro coin-op games is that you can't always recreate the tactile realities of the cabinets. Emulation on a modern PC only goes so far. Uh oh, they're calling us out. Back in the day, a large part of Boot Hill's attraction came from a cabinet's low-tech approach, which used mirrors to project its monochrome action onto a hand-drawn overlay frontier town. Playing without it, isn't half as fun. Well, I guess they wrote this book before emulators allowed you to do this, because now you can totally put the display up. Um, a graveyard where dead players go. The graveyard's a cheap trick, yet it doesn't nod to the high stake. And they literally don't talk about why it's influenced. I'm, I can venture a bet that it's influential because it was one of the earliest arcade games. Then it did this little trick with the overlay. So I don't know. That's my guess. 
Hey, if you know why this game's influential, hit us up in the comments and let us know. Um, but yeah, I guess my 800th video is going to be a little short because I don't want to drag it out too long here. But Boot Hill is one of the games in the book, a thousand one video games just play before you die. It is our 800th video. Guys, if you are watching this, I hope that you have been enjoying the quest. I hope you have been enjoying the ride, so to speak. Um, and I appreciate all of you who are tuning in every week to check out what crazy games I'm playing next. Um, for our 801st video, which is the beginning of year nine, um, I do have uh, Jordan, special guest, visiting us, and we're playing uh, a childhood game of ours that we think is a retro classic. So I won't spoil it, but you're going to have to tune in once again to find out. And uh, yeah. Um, I think I, I think I'll keep it short and sweet. I'm going to end there guys. It has been fun. It has been a blast. I will catch you in the next video. Keep on cowboying and, uh, keep it real. <laughs> I don't know. All right, guys. Peace. Oh my God. I forgot to say if I recommend this game, you know, I've only been doing this for nine years. Give me a couple more years and I'll actually get good at this. I would say that this is the kind of game that. While probably a big deal back in the day, there's probably no point to playing it these days. Uh, and I'm sorry if you grew up with this game. If it does, if you grew up with it and it holds a nostalgic spot in your heart, double thumbs up. Because some of the things that are nostalgic to me are not always necessarily the things I would recommend to other people. One of those things that I think if you didn't grow up with it, you probably aren't going to like it. And I just think games have come too far since Boot Hill here. It's, it's kind of cool. Uh, it's an interesting sort of uh, curiosity from the earliest days, but I don't know if the gameplay here is necessarily going to hold up. So anyway, those are my thoughts. Agree with me, disagree. It's all good. Feel free to uh, correct me down in the comments if you think I'm way off base. But uh, uh, okay, so now you've got my recommendation. All right, I won't forget next time. Guys, we'll catch you in the next one.